Let's try this again. My name is Rachel. I am a knitter, a mom, a crocheter, a teacher, and a wife. And today I am filming an episode just to talk about my current progress on my test knit for Veronica Lindberg, as well as some other projects that I'm working on. And I like to share with you one finished object. And so if you are interested in learning more, stay tuned so you can hear all about the trials and tribulations I've been going through. So usually whenever I film um, an episode of myself speaking about my uh, craft reflections, I tend to wear a sweatshirt, but today I got a chance to, um, sorry, I thought I heard someone coming. Uh, I got a chance to try on this, the test knit and I wanted to share this with you guys. So this is called the Oatmeal Sweater. This is by Veronica Lindbergh. And this is a sweater that I'm using um, Louis Roberts' um, um, special collection yarn. Uh, let me actually tell you the exact thing. It's the uh, hand-dyed yarn, DK Pure. It comes with 284 yards, which is about 260 meters for every 115 gram ball. Um, I got this from Biscote Yarn, and it was $30 per skein. And I have a total of six skeins of this yarn. Now, as I've been working on this, I've been afraid I was going to, I'm going to run out of yarn because I unraveled the original project this yarn was in, and I am down to one. No, I'm down to two full skeins of yarn for this in order to finish the body. I have the sleeves finished. Um, as you can see, I used another um, DK Superwash Merino that had a similar composition as the yarn in itself. And I liked how it blend, but also created this little stripey effect. And so, and when you look at it in certain lights, it actually blends really well for what happens up here. So I thought it would be really cool feature and I know that this is a super wash yarn and it's going to grow because right now when I'm not stretching the sleeves it comes up here but when I want to stretch the sleeves it does that so I kind of like that a little bit more so I may not go too crazy with it and I also like what it does here on the top I haven't blocked this or anything like that I just wanted to see will it actually fit my upper bust will it fit my shoulders will it feel tight and I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath and it does not feel tight it feels actually quite comfortable comfortable to wear. I don't feel like I had to like force myself in and went over smoothly. So I'm really happy with the size that I chose. And because I second guess that I don't know about some of you, but anytime I am knitting a garment, I tend to like think like, oh, maybe I should have went a size up um, or maybe I should have went up a needle size. Like I give myself all kinds of uh, excuses because I just assume that the size I'm doing is either too big or too small. And then once I try it on, I realize that I'm not. As I tried it on with this uh, barber cable and luckily it fits perfectly and I'm really, really am excited to continue working on it now because last night, um, which is Friday, I love just sitting in my yarn room and sitting, I light a candle, I put on my favorite podcast and I listen to them for, and it's good about four or five hours of listening to various podcasts and drinking tea or something else, uh, whatnot. And I will have such a wonderful evening. But last night I had no desire to knit. I was just sitting there like, I don't want to work on this sweater. So I actually started uh, working. I picked up some stuff I needed to do or finish for work and was doing that. And I spent like an hour and a half doing that. And I'm like, if I rather spend my Friday night knits working, what does that say about this particular project? And so I took a break from working and I picked up the needles and as I was working on this, I noticed a huge mistake that I was making in the back of the sweater. Um, so the back of the sweater has the same cross um, stitch section that you see here in the front. I know it's not blocked out as well, but it is definitely coming out the way that the pattern is supposed to look like. I can't believe I'm doing this right. So it was working out fine here in the front, but it wasn't in the back. And I'm like, well, let me do a stitch count. And so I did a stitch count and I noticed that I was five stitches off. So I frogged the whole thing. I found, I put a little lifeline in actually using um, some knitting needles. I put a, um, put the knittle and needle in and then I frogged all the way down to the knitting needle. And then I just grouped all the yarn together and then took one strand at a time and just knit across. And then when I was finished with that one, picked up the next one, just knit across. And as I was able to do that, I ended up doing about uh, 24 uh, rows over and I'm glad I did it because it looks so much better on the back now it looks too pattern and again this is a test knit if I had purchased this particular pattern then if I make mistakes like that that's on me but I also want to do my very best with this even though I am uh, now 15 days 
more than 50 days. I'm almost um, 20 now, 20 days overdue with turning in this um, project or s submitting it as finished. So my hope is that I can have it, have this sweater done by next Sunday because I've mentioned um, earlier that I am using the month of April to really get all of my um, whips um, that which are works in progress finish. I have, um, I had five works in projects. I, I had a vanilla sock pattern I was doing. I really didn't like the yarn um, for the pattern I was using it for. I was using this uh, beautiful DK yarn for a sock pattern and I just didn't like the way it was coming up. So I decided to take the yarn and use it for a hat. So I have one of those uh, hat making machines and I decided just to make like a long tube. So I have two of them here and it's very similar to um, the Musselburg or other tubular hats where when you fold it in on itself and my goal is to have one side be um, similar to this hat so this is a long tube and one side of it with long long piece of it was black and the other long piece was is this like gray and this is a sock yarn that I had it was a cashmere uh, sock yarn that was gifted to me by um, one of my peers and it's the Queen Anne yarn and I was like oh yeah this would be perfect and so I made this lovely little hat here using my um, hat making machine. And I was thinking like, oh, I could do the same thing with the DK yarn. And I had some leftover yarn um, that I got from Rhineback. This is um, from the uh, Miss Babs collection that I use for my sister-in-law's project. I can't remember the name of the yarn colorway, but I had so much of this yarn um, done. And it's such a beautiful yarn and I like the way it worked up. And it's definitely more of a DK weight yarn, um, light worsted. And I thought these two colors would go well together. And I do like the way this looks in the sunlight. And I know we're past the season of wearing hats, but I thought it would still be good to like have as many hats as possible. Is one thing I do is donate a significant portion of hats I make. I try to make at least 30 hats a year on that knitting machine and donate them to either a shelter or to Goodwill or to the Salvation Army. And I make sure that I make them a quality so that way if I do donate it to Goodwill or Salvation Army that it's, you know, worth selling to someone else. So I enjoy doing that. And someone can also buy it to repurpose the yarn for other projects too because I you know, if you know what you're doing, you know how to take apart yarn, <laughs> yarn in that regard. But anywho, um, so technically I finished or frogged a product, uh, project depending on one's perspective. Uh, I was also able to make my son a blanket, if you excuse me one second. I have been um, crocheting this blanket, uh, ooh, I wanna say since December. And uh, no, I started in January, according to my robbery. Um, but I realized that for my youngest son, I never made him anything before. I've only made him uh, little stuffies that have turned into disasters. Poor things didn't could not survive the playroom that he and his brother had when they were um, toddlers. So <laughs> I wanted to make him his own personal blanket that was from me because uh, his older brothers both have blankets I made for them. Um, that they both still sleep with at nighttime and I thought it'd be nice for him to have it. So I made this him made him this beautiful red blanket. Red is his favorite color. Um, I'm using a 50% acrylic, 50% um, wool yarn. And I thought it would be really great for him to have in his own um, bedroom. And it goes with the colors in his room. And my next job is to practice um, seaming on a Spider-Man. And I was thinking about putting that on, but then I was like, He's going to grow out of Spider-Man. Like lately, he hasn't even been talking about Spider-Man as much as he used to. Uh, so I'm like, should I still put Spider-Man on there or put something else on there? But I just did a, a normal corner to corner blanket. I don't have a pattern that I follow. Once I learned how to do the technique, I just pretty much do my own thing. And the yarn in itself is beautiful. It's a little has a little tonal um, quality to it, which I thought was pretty dope. I use a 5.5 millimeter hook, which I think is a US 9. And it just worked out really quickly. I got into it last week. I just, it was what I wanted to do, especially because my elbow had started um, hurt again. And then I noticed it didn't hurt when I was crocheting. So I'm like, oh, well, might as well crochet. <laughs> this is the season for crochet. I've noticed more people are doing that more and more. And I'm like, I've been crocheting. Y'all are, y'all are late to the party. But anywho, I finished my son's blanket. So I was really excited about that. And then I realized I need to pick a project and I can either work on this or I can work on uh, my other project. So I have three other works in progress, which are not sitting right next to me. So I'm 
Gotta get up again. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> So I do have, um, so this is my first works in progress. Uh, in my mind, I'm telling myself that I should finish this first. So that way I can alert um, Veronica Liber that I finished the pattern. But I don't think she's waiting. Obviously, she's not waiting on me <laughs> to finish or to market the pattern. She is her own designer and produces patterns at her own rate or whatnot. So I know she's not waiting on me. I don't, I'm not that egotistical or whatnot, but a part of me wants to finish that just so I can have it off the needles. Plus um, I'm using a four millimeter needle and it's one of the more popular needles that I use for many of the patterns that I have MQ to do. So that's why I'm like, I kind of want to just get it done, just to get it done. Plus this has been a bane of my existence. Um, I've had some trouble with the yarn. I've had some trouble with the needles. I had some troubles with my own physical pain. So I'm just ready to be done with it uh, because I never experienced some of the pains that I had had in my elbows. And I definitely recognize that I'm not doing yoga as much as I used to. And I'm definitely not exercising as much as I was before. And so I'm hoping that I will be, um, that I will start doing it more. I used to stretch every night before I went to bed. I was making myself stretch um at least two or three times and when I say stretch do like a full yoga online class and I would usually do that um, usually a 10 to 15 minute class depending on how much time I would have get that done and I always felt looser and more energized both mentally and physically and just for whatever reason lately I've just been lazy and just not engaging in it and I should because I there's no denying the fact that yoga has been a beautiful addition to my life especially when i made a transition for being a principal to a teacher i was feeling very stressed and disappointed in myself because i was for the first time putting a career goal on hold for my family and i've never done that before i've always been a very i'm, I'm a very ambitious person i'm not going to say was i am a very ambitious person and so it was really hard for me to admit that I could not invest the time and energy to being a successful principal as well as putting the time and energy to raise my two younger sons at the time because at that time my stepson was around 12 or 13 so he needs me or needed me but he didn't have the same level of attention needs as he had when he was younger whereas my other two children were uh, toddlers. Um, one was a new baby and the other one was just coming out of diapers when I made the decision to become a principal and became a temp principal. So with all that said, I had developed some severe sciatic nerve pain in my lower back and I didn't know what to do. Um, my doctor had said, oh, it's just stressed. You have to figure out some ways to alleviate your stress. And I'm like, I don't know how, I don't know what's causing me stress. And I randomly, um, she has mentioned stretching. So I went on YouTube, as we all do, when we don't know how to do something. And I came across Yoga with Cassandra. And she actually had a YouTube video dedicated to dealing with lower back pain, specifically sciatic nerve. So it was a 30 minute class. I'm like, I'm gonna sit here and try this. And it's probably gonna be too complicated. I loved it from the beginning to the end. She taught you through each step. She taught you through each breathing exercise. It was a wonderful and I felt so much better afterwards. And I found by doing that um, about two times a day for about two weeks, not only did the pain in my lower back and my legs went away, but my mental health also felt renewed. I felt more aware of my surroundings. I felt more energized and I felt less guilty about a promise I had made myself as um, a young educator that I know that I wanted this and I did achieve this, but I can't keep doing this if I want to be the type of mother that I want to be. I want to be involved with my kid's life. And I'm not saying that professionals um, like principals and others can't be involved in their children's life. Because even as a teacher, I am taking, my time is sometimes taken significantly from my children. But um, I just know that the type of principal that I was, I just could not engage with my kids in that same level because all my energy and attention went into it um that job but anywho uh, i found that yoga was just really healing and so now that my body's going through this um change and being 40 in its 40s and getting all aches and bruises my feet are always hurting i should be doing more exercising and i'm not so i encourage you all <laughs> 
to take a page, not out of my book, and do some more uh, stretching, so, uh, whether it's yoga or something else, because um, it's definitely a wonderful healing mechanism. I just have not taken the time to do so, um, and hopefully I will. But anyway, enough of that random moment of sharing. Uh, my other two works in progress, other than one I'm wearing on my body, is uh, some of my New Year's Eve and New Year's cast on. So I had this like epiphany um, early morning on New Year's Eve that I needed to cast on one more project before the year came to an end. Why? I don't know. And so I put the Copenhagen um, cardigan because I had planned to knit this about two years ago. This is shortly after my success with the Sunday sweater and the Sunday cardigan, the double Sunday cardigan. I should say, I was like, I'm going to knit the Copenhagen because it's a beautiful, um, lightweight uh, cardigan that I thought would be uh, a staple in my wardrobe. And it will. So I cast this on. I'm using the yarn I had initially purchased to make the traveler for my niece but I realized I needed at least four more skeins of yarn in order to do that and this is hand dyed yarn and I knew it would be a lot of pulling so I opted not to do that particular project plus she's a teenager and I just was worried I'm sorry I spent $300 on this yarn and I know how she treats her clothes so nope <laughs> wasn't going to do that so I decided to repurpose, I gave her another uh, sweater but anywho I decided to repurpose the yarn for a um for the Copenhagen. Now the Copenhagen calls for a sport weight, DK weight um, yarn. And the yarn I'm using is fingering. And so I had to change my sizing uh, with this. Cause usually whenever I knit a petite knit pattern, I will do it either a size medium or a medium too. Because sometimes some of the, the patterns I've knit, I haven't, I can't speak for all of them cause I haven't made all her patterns. But, but the patterns I made, I usually do a M2 as a size. And so for this one, I decided to go, um, based on my gauge, I actually got gauge for um, what the pattern called for. So I went ahead and selected a large because I still want to wear it slightly oversized as I know I'm going to have garments on as well with the cardigan. And the way that I, the reason why I decided to use a fingering weight, I really want a more lightweight garment. Um, I am at an age where I get um, hot very easily. So I found that uh, using layering pieces in my wardrobe has made it much more comfortable for me to interact with people while I'm at work. So this Copenhagen cardigan, um, I know it looks a little small because I have it bunched up on the needles, but uh, it's working up really easily. And what I love about this particular cardigan is the fact that you are doing the collar at the same time that you're knitting the cardigan. And I think that's one of the things that attracts me to this particular one. I, um, and I, the reason why I like the Great Love cardigan, that although that particular pattern just drove me bananas because of the texture stitch pattern that you really got to pay attention to. It was not a mindless knit as much as you want it to be. But anywho, I love the fact that you knit the collar and the body of the sweater all at the same time. And so this is another cardigan that does that. And um, I prefer those. I don't like picking up the stitches for cardigans. I notice that the stitch count is always off or like there's one part of it where you picked it up perfectly, but when you get to the other end is you were like missing five stitches. So it has this little effect and then you gotta rip it all back in, all, in order to do it again. I don't like that at all. I prefer um, this type of cardigan because you, uh, you essentially are knitting, although the button band on this cardigan is very thin, let me bring it a little closer. It is very small, but that's okay. Uh, but I prefer this and I don't really like a lot of um, ribbing anyway for my sweaters. So this is a perfect and I really want to get into it. It's a stocking net pattern, so I know it's going to be mindless. And um, as I mentioned before, I'm using um, Mrs. Babs. This yarn is called, um, this is the Laurel Falls yarn, sport weight. It's 100% superwash with 300 yards per 100 gram ball, or skein, I should say. And the color I picked is Dark Adromina. And I needed another red cardigan. The one I had for a long time is actually one of the cardigans, one of the earliest cardigans I purchased in the beginning of my teaching career. Um, got so many holes in it, it wasn't even funny. And I still was wearing it because I just loved it. It was an all over cabled red cardigan, lightweight, perfect um, for the various temperatures in the classroom. So this is its replacement. Um, and although it's not car um, cables, stocking that and I hope to do another cable um, cardigan soon. I'm, my goal is to do the Cloud Peak 
cable cardigan in brown because I need another brown cardigan. I love the color brown and I was hesitant about wearing it uh, when I was younger because I thought it would wash me out. So um, I am of dark complexion, obviously, and I didn't think brown would fit me. But then let me reach back. Oh, I did it. I saw this and I just fell in love with this color at um, Joann's. And I love the way it looks on my skin and I can just see myself wearing this with a pair of jeans and wearing a bright color shirt underneath. And I just thought that this would be the perfect um, yarn to use. Um, this is the Fisherman Wool. It's 100% wool from Lion Brand. And I've always been hesitant about using it because it's a little rustic. And I'm like, oh, it's not gonna, it's, gonna, it's going to hurt my skin is what I would always tell myself. But then I found this beautiful lace weight yarn because the pattern for the Cloud Peak calls for a mohair. And so instead of buying a whole bunch of brown mohair that's going to be itchy and uncomfortable or buying Surya Alpaca, I decided to either, I'm going to do a swatch. I have to, I'm just still imagining this. I'm planning this. But my goal is to take this. I'm going to do a swatch with this lace weight cashmere yarn that I think will soften this. I'm going to make a, um, a swatch with that. And then I'm also going to make a swatch with the Drops Brush Alpaca. And I'll see which fabric I like the most. And then which one really um, shows off the cable definition in the sweater and then once I make my selection I'll go ahead and start that but that particular project probably will not start until like June or July um most likely August if I'm being honest because July is a little busy so July I need to do a lot of just mindless knits that's what I want to do in July just mindless knits because I have lots of work engagements um scheduled for that but anywho um, that's a potential work in progress but let me just share my final <laughs> work in progress which is sweater number 20 now I purchased this sweater whoo gosh um, I've only been knitting for three years so it must have been in year one when I purchased this and I love the pattern as you can see I have made some really great progress I love this yarn I love, love this yarn so let me tell you about this yarn why I cannot wait to get into it first of all I had planned to use this yarn for a cardigan so this was supposed to I actually think was this a cloud peak I think I cast this on for the Cloud Peak. So this is the first version of it. And I'm praying that I can rip it out because now that I'm a little bit more familiar with some of the construction, I realize that yarn that's being held with Surrey can be a little challenging to rip out. But I think if I do it carefully, I should be okay. And I haven't wet block it, so that might also help it as well. But um Oh, so beautiful. So I was I was in love with it. I had every intention of keeping going. But then I saw the what did it I saw the pat my pattern picture for the sweater number 20 and I was like, oh my God, I need to do that in uh, cause I was going to do it with the fisherman wool, but I'm like, I needed to use the bare naked wool yarn. So this yarn, as you may recall, I bought the bare naked wool yarn from um uh what was it, Rhineback? And I bought way too much. I bought the, I bought this yarn and I bought the other one. They're both a part of their, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for, there it is. I'm like, I know I have it. They're both, oh, the getting so tangled. Um, they're both a part of the stone soup. And when I say both, I bought a sweater's quantity of worsted and a sweater's quantity of DK of their stone soup worsted. I am in love with this yarn. I had heard about it from Kevin and Ray on their podcast and Kevin was going on about like how much fun it was to work with the yarn and the outcome of it. And the sweater that he showed that he used this particular yarn for, I was like, oh my God, I want this yarn. And then I found out, um, that they were going to be a vendor. Oh, sorry, alpaca. Ugh, don't you hate when it happens? I found out it was going, um, they were going to be a vendor around back when I'm like, well, I, I have to go see their booth. And they were actually one of the first booths I was able to visit and purchase yarn from. So it felt wonderful. And there's little specks of hay inside the yarn. And I thought that would bother me, but actually I love it. It makes it feel so much more authentic. And yeah, um, it's so soft and squishy and plump. It's just, it's a beautiful yarn. This is made in the USA. Um, what type of sheep it is, I'm not too sure, but it's yeah, I'm not too sure, but whatever sheep it is, it's a beautiful sheep and I'm grateful for their wool. So my hope is that as soon as I finish with this particular sweater to work on the Copenhagen. Now here's my dilemma. 
this is a test knit. It was due on March 24th. Today is April 13th. Clearly I'm past the due, due deadline. Other test knitters have finished the pattern and have given significant feedback to Ms. Lindbergh. I too have given feedback about the pattern, so I have fulfilled my obligations as a test knitter. Part of me, sorry, still got the yarn in my mouth. <laughs> Part of me wants to take a break from this pattern um, due to my elbows, due to um, my knitting mojo, because I want to maintain knitting and I want to work on my Copenhagen sweater. The reason why I want to do this one first is because I know for a fact I can wear this cardigan not only for the rest of the school year because that is going to become colder in our building because of the AC and I will be able to take this on and off. So this is a perfect teacher sweater. <laughs> So that's my first motivation for it. Plus it's color red. Then I feel like I can finish that one faster. Then I wanted to finish, oops, then I wanted to finish this sweater because I cast this on December 3rd. No, I cast this on November 1st. Oh my gosh, let's try again. I cast this on January 1st. I cast the other one on, a third, on December 31st and this was my first sweater cast on. And so it is now April. I know that at no point in time I'm going to be wearing this um, particular garment until the fall, but I really cannot wait to wear this sweater in the sweater in the fall. But that is a lot of cabling. And I'm curious about maybe one of the reasons why I might be feeling this elbow pain is because I'm doing more cabling. Um, in my previous patterns that I've been working on, it wasn't as much cabling. It was so part of me was like, okay, I'll do a cable, then I do a stockinette, then I do a cable. So that's where I'm at. If I go with, with this new plan, this is what I was leading up to. This is my idea. I have a couple of patterns that I have purchased that I really need to knit up. My queue is thick. My room is full of yarn and it's it's saying, please do something with me because I'm tired of collecting the dust. So I'm sorry, I'm bringing out my notes. Here's where I'm at. I've done already, I've already done a cable work sweater. So I, I'm still not in the mood to do another color work um, sweater is what I was trying to say. I've already did a, a color work sweater. So I'm not in the mood to do color work. However, I want to do some lace. I did some lace work for the 24 birds shawl and it was a disaster and it's a circular shawl and I'm not a really a big fan of circular shawls. Uh, at a, I don't know how to wear them. Plus it's just, I, I know if I had read the pattern in its entirety, cause she does give you this information in the product, um, in the project page. So I could have seen that before purchasing it, but it was only six bucks. So I mean, like, come on, I decided to put a pause on that. I think I'm going to do the Fajola. That is a pattern that has been in my queue <laughs> for three years. And yeah, I put it in my queue the uh, the year it came out. So it came out October, 2021. It's a pattern by Isabel Kramer. And the reason why I'm leaning towards this is because I think this is a great pattern to really learn the art of uh, lace work because it's lace work here in the front. If I can, I'll insert a picture, but there's uh, lace work here in the um, collar and then there's lace work all down the sleeves. And I think this is an excellent way to practice um, how to knit um, lace work is one of the mistakes I consistently make with lace work is that sometimes I go through it knit wise when there's other instances I go through it um, in a back loop and I need to maintain consistency because that's where the uh, mistakes happen and I notice that every time I do an Isabel Kramer pattern I walk away very skilled at a technique like my cabling. This, I understand there are some master knitters out there that are much better than I am, but this is the best cabling I have ever done in my entire knitting career. This cabling that I did here, again, beautiful. And the reason why my cables look so good, because I did an Isabel Kramer pattern. There was the Ela sweater. And I know that it's not, it doesn't look exactly like a cable, but it would gave a really clear directions on how to manipulate the yarn to make really an intricate texture sweater. And then I also did her, um, I don't know how to, what to call it, but it's this lightweight cardigan that has, um, cabling down the front of it and again this learn how to do lace work as well as cabling with that and i felt so much more confident in the cable because that was what i was focusing on because it was the most noticeable um and you did eyelets with that one too i love doing that pattern i wish i knew how to say it but anywho excuse me my goal is to do the forjola so what i'm thinking 
now that I said it out loud. I think I'm going to focus, I'm going to spend today working on this cable because today is my day. I'm not, um, my kids are all set. I'm letting them roam free, be the wild little boys that they are. And uh, I'm going to just take a break because we're on um, spring break and I just need, I need a minute. Um, I'm, my mental energy just feels taxed. So I'm going to take today just to do the things I want to do. I wanted to mop my floor in the kitchen. So I mopped the floor in the kitchen. I wanted to go to Target and buy myself two new candles. So I did. So I bought two candles to go on each nightstand in my room. And this evening I'm going to light the candles and I'm just going to sit in a bed and either listen to my audiobook or watch downtown um, Abbey. Um, one of my peers it's things that I will like it. So I'm like, okay, I'll give it a try. She suggested the Bridgerton series and I actually um, enjoyed it. It was pretty entertaining. Uh, Queen Charlotte uh, was also entertaining. Um, the book was was good. I, I mean, I have some mixed feelings about it. But anywho, uh, I just want to like get into some binge worthy TV because as I said, I've heard some really interesting things from people, different people about both series. So I'm going to um, do some binge watching because um, I haven't really been able to do that consistently. And I notice that when I get a chance to binge watch and knit and just relax, I feel more centered and then I can tackle the things I need to do. And I also am hoping that I can go on a hike today. I'm waiting. Uh, my husband's watching The Masters and I don't know if any of you are partnered with anyone who loves golf, but it's a very big tournament. I don't but anywho, I get it's like they're running back. There you go. So anywho, I say all this is that I want to, I made this like romantic plan <laughs> with myself. I made a date, I suppose, uh, with myself for this evening because tomorrow's my wedding anniversary. So I got to, you know, do that. And then um, next week, my kids have convinced me to do a yes day celebration. Um, they watched this movie yesterday uh, about a year ago now. And after they watched the movie, like, mommy, we want a yes day. And I'm like, what the heck is a yes day? And they went on and on and on talking about it. So I was like, okay, I watched the movie with them again. And I'm like, oh, great. So it's essentially just what, what it sounds like. It's a day where as a parent, you are saying yes to all of the requests that your child is making. And last year, my kids got a little extreme with it. And I ended up spending way too much money doing all the stuff that they wanted to do. So this year, I told them if they wanted to do a yes day, they had to pick. So they picked April break to do it because usually we travel. And this year, um, for whatever reason, we couldn't decide where we wanted to go. And by the time... As it got closer to the month of April, I knew ticket prices would be outrageous. So I'm like, well, we're clearly not traveling anywhere for April break. We're going to have to wait till August. I'm going out of town uh, with my kids. I just don't know where. But but my husband and I cannot agree upon where we should go for our vacation. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Because uh, he's thinking Disney World and I'm thinking no. Uh, so anyway, uh, for yesterday... Uh, I have work next week. I have a couple of um, meetings for consultancy work I'm doing. So I've broken into steps. Um, the first day on Monday, I'm going to take them to the go-kart place because they love that. And then we're going to get ice cream because there's an ice cream parlor at the place that they like to go drive go-karts. And then on Tuesday, what are they doing on Tuesday? Tuesday, I believe it's another... Oh, I think it's a game day. I think we're playing video games because I don't let them play video games very often. So they are going to convince me of doing that. Um, Wednesday, we're going to go stay at a hotel. That was one of the th requests that they had that has a pool. So we're going to do that on Wednesday. Thursday, um, what are we doing Thursday? Thursday, I think my son wants to go out to dinner. But the issue about going out to dinner is that I have a meeting Thursday evening. So I think we're going to go out to lunch, um, breakfast. I think I'm going to take them to IHOP because that was one of the requests they made. They wanted to eat pancakes at IHOP. Um, Friday, they have... Um, Friday, it's a boys night. They're hanging out with their dad. And then Saturday is my nephew's birthday party. So we're doing that. And then Sunday, um, I have to make grits. Uh, it's my middle son's favorite um, breakfast item. So I'm going to make them grits for that. So we'll see how that goes. So a variety of different um, things. Sometimes as a mom, I feel this need to constantly do something with the kids. Um, it makes me feel like I'm a, like I'm being an interactive, active parent. But I noticed that the days that we have loose plans ends up being the best days 
rather than the ones when we have like a very clear cut plan that this has to be done. Those tend to be a little inauthentic um, and just not as engaging and not as much fun for the kids. But, uh, and I say this as an example, I went to, um, I had a very specific plan for the kids. We had breakfast together, then we went to the aquarium and after the aquarium, I wanted to do a walk around the city and then go, uh, what did I want to do? Then I wanted to go take them for lunch. My boys were not having it for whatever reason. They were not into the, the fish that day. <laughs> they didn't care about any of the fish. They love the aquarium, but they were not into it. So they were begging to leave. And so I left and I was just like, are you kidding me? Like I had this plan and they were just like, no. I was like, well, what about the walk? And it was like, oh my gosh, are we done? And Boston has a lot of little hidden gems whenever you walk around. Like I've always enjoyed walking around the city of Boston. It's one of my favorite things to do. They were not feeling it at all. And so I was like, well, fine. And so we get in the car and we're driving what I thought was back home. And then my uh, son was like, can we get a chicken salad sandwich? I would really like to have chicken salad sandwich for lunch. And then my youngest was like, can I have ramen noodles? I would really like to have ramen noodles. I'm like, I don't have either one of those things at home. So we ended up going to the grocery store. I had a blast going grocery shopping and just like cracking up jokes and like putting random stuff in the shopping cart coming home in the kitchen together, making lunch, the three of us. And then we sat down, we had lunch together and we were just chatting away. And it just ended up being one of my most favorite memories I have with my kids because it was an unplanned activity. So um, I'm hoping to make some more with them as well. Uh, but anyway, that's more rambling about my family. And you're here to talk about knitting, I hope. And crochet but uh that's my plan um for next week i'm going to work on this today and i think starting on sunday is going to be me in the copenhagen and finish that either this is going to be finished by next week or the copenhagen sweater which one do you think i'm going to end up finishing let's see thank you so much for staying tuned and hearing me share my random rambles and listening to me share some little tidbits about my life and I hope that you are well and I look forward to talking with you again about your nanny plans drop in the comments about what you are up to and what you're working on for the next couple of days